Um, I became Glenn Gould's chambermaid because the other chambermaids, who were mostly middle-aged uh, Italian and Jamaican women, were terrified of him. They thought he was strange, probably some sort of sexual deviant. Um, they just found him peculiar because he was very eccentric. When we were in Moscow in 1957, we stayed at the Canadian Embassy. And uh, after the first concert, um, we went back into our limousine, which had been loaned to us by the Embassy. And uh, at the end of the concert, Glenn had received a tremendous number of flowers and big pots of mums and uh, other flowers. And as we got into the limousine and sat down, all the flowers had been piled up there and we had barely room to sit there. And Glenn said to me, you know, Walter, it feels like we are driving to our own funeral at this point. This was his, his passion. He really, really wanted to start you know, retire away to Manitoulin Island to buy a big hunk of it and bring every unwanted animal in the world there. And there were uh, numerous boxes. I think one time I counted a dozen boxes of arrowroot cookies uh, sort of scattered about the room. And there were also uh, numerous bottles of ketchup. It was an, a very penetrating interview most intelligent questions I think I'd ever heard about the North from experts, laymen, or anything else. Questions that required rather long answers. And as I would start to speak or make a point, he would register his feelings, not by voice, but by a smile. But all the time, he was using his hands and conducting. And uh, this was perhaps slightly off-putting when we were trying to think deep thoughts, but because I had no idea what this was all about. But he continuously was just waving his arm and then sort of bring up this idea and so on. Um, I was his orchestra for that hour. So he decided to wear this business suit and I discussed it with him and I said, you know, Glenn, I'm not sure that the public will understand what you're trying to convey, but if you want to do it, go ahead. Uh, which he did and he was probably the first artist that went out on stage without the, what was considered then, the proper concert attire, but he again was in the forefront of change. He used to wake up at about uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, to get himself awake, he used to phone people. And I was one of those people that uh, he phoned. And uh, he'd, he'd talk about anything, you know. He just wanted a listening board. One night he called, and he was babbling on and it was probably about one o'clock in the morning, something like that, and he, uh, and I fell asleep. Uh, as a matter of fact, before I fell asleep, I had stretched out on the rug, and I had the phone there, because I 
been sitting in a chair and I got tired of sitting in the chair. I stretched out and he was talking, talking, talking and I wasn't talking at all uh, and I fell asleep. And the next thing I knew, my son had walked into the room and he ki was kicking me on the soles of my feet. And he said, wake up, there's somebody on the phone. And it was Glenn and he was talking away and I don't know how long I had been sleeping, but I didn't even uh, remember the sequence. He was just, the words were just pouring out. <laughs> the phone rang, and as I picked it up, it was Glenn Gould on the other end, and he said, Hi, this is Glenn Gould, and I feel like talking. Mario, you said, I've come across the most marvelous opera for your program. I said, what is it? He says, you know, Ernst Krennic. I said, yes, certainly. He said, I've got this marvelous opera by him. He said, wait, I've got the score here. I'll sing it to you. So he sang this entire one-act opera, one-act two-scene opera over the telephone in his not very pleasant voice. He was very much involved in, with himself. You know, he didn't think of, of what others had to... Uh, what others had to do or their responsibilities you know he was he was consumed with um, with what he was doing and his own things his will was that he uh, left half of his estate to the SPCA Society for the Prevention of Cruelties to Animals and the other half to the Salvation Army yes getting 318 back from Ottawa to tune for the conservatory when I was phoned up about it I thought should I do this I thought no I'm gonna do it just for old times sake and when I got working on 318 again and 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 cleaned it up and tuned it and worked on the action a bit it felt good so I guess I'd miss it uh, I missed his uh, intelligent comments and and uh, I miss listening to his uh, 20 questions not particularly to me but uh, uh, he was I'll tell you one thing today I had a customer phone me up and say can you come tomorrow to tune my piano Glenn Gould used to give me two or three months notice and I respected that and I'm very thankful for knowing him